Alwarkadayan went to the house of his Tamayanar Isana Sivapatar after seeing the king. His house was very close to Vadamarali Shiva temple. It is half an ear distance from the palace. If you go from the Chola house to the Vadamarali temple, you can get a sense of the extent of the city of Palayare and its other features. Alwarkadayan went to see that all the Krishna Jayanthi celebrations were subdued. As he passed through the residential areas, he observed women gathered here and there at the edges of the houses and talking angrily. All those women were the ones who enthusiastically sent their husbands or sons to the war fronts with Vanchi flower garlands around their necks. In the heroic battles waged by the Chola armies in the four directions, there was never a hero who did not go from each house and reach the hero's heaven. Thirumali up and saw that such women were now muttering in displeasure. He went on worrying about how all this would end. It was well dark when he reached Vadamarali temple. This is the temple blessed by the Lord. During that Mahana's time, the giants had built artificial hills around this temple and built molas on those hills. Digambara giants used to sit and do penance in artificial mountain caves. To remind us of this, even today there is a town called Juyur near Palayare. When Aparparuman heard about the glory of the old place and arrived there, the giants had completely covered the Shiva temple. Knowing this through spiritual knowledge, Appar repented. As a representative of the Pallavas, he appealed to Kiratarazan, who was ruling the Chola country at that time. The king tore down a part of the artificial moose and threw it away. It was found that there was a small Shiva temple inside. Appar sang ecstatically. The temple was later enhanced by the Chola kings and built as a Kadali but still around the temple there was a rampart like a wall. There was only one tower gate to enter the temple, there is no other door. Entering the temple Prakarat through the Gopura gate, one can easily reach the abode of Lord Shiva. If not, you have to go round and round. Thus he entered the gate of the Tirumala Gopura to reach his Tamayanar's house by a cross road. Inside, some servants were seen standing in the shrine of Swami. They appeared to be Kashidas disguised as Krishna and Balarama. Aha! Where did these people end up here? Before he could think about that, Lord Shiva rushed out of the temple. Just then, he grabbed Thirumalai's hand, who had entered the tower gate, and dragged him outside. Brother! What is this? Alwarkadian asked. I tell you, Thirumalai. From now on let all our relations be outside the temple. You Patti then, a religious brash who blasphemes Shiva, don't you step into this temple. You see? I was waiting too much. I couldn't bear what you said today in front of the great Maharani. Come home and fill your big belly. Take it. But don't step inside the temple. If you do, I will become Sandy's Waranayanar. Saying this, Isana Shivbata grabbed Tirumala's neck and pushed him away, saying that he would close the temple door. Anna! Anna! Thirumalai started to say something and left without paying attention for a moment, slamming the door of the temple inside. Oko! So polite! All Workadian muttered. He stood there for a while. Then a Kavanar went around the temple two or three times, including the Jain shrines. He purposely went around to the left, thinking that if he went to the right, he would have done the Pratadshina. He saw that all the doors of the Jaminar temple were well closed in the circular shape of the shrines. Later, Isana went to the house of Sivabhada. Butter's wife is very fond of Tirumalai, who talks funny. After talking to Amma more than usual, after eating a full stomach of Shiva temple offerings, he came and lay down on the doorstep. He remembered a scene he saw on the first day when he came to the bank of Kudamuryudi River. Hearing the sound of some horses galloping in the opposite direction, he hid behind the thick bamboo bushes beside him. The first horse that came ran like a trotter. It was drenched, I don't know if it was because of sweat or because of the river flooding. A small boy was sitting on the camel. He was tied to the horse. The boy's face was filled with panic and determination. A little behind came another forty-five horses. Upon them came the soldiers who had seized upon them. It seemed that they would be caught soon. 
One of them raised his spear above his head and aimed to hurl it at the advancing horse. Another blocked it. At that time the boy had to go under the thick bamboo bushes. A slightly bent bamboo branch caught in his hair. When the horse pulls the horse in front, the people who came behind came and caught the donkey while they were waiting to see what would happen to the child. Seeing the child tied to the horse, they were amazed, dismayed, and angry. They asked him something. He stuttered in response. The details did not fall on all Workadian's ears. Where is he? Where is he? The question that was asked many times fell on deaf ears. The young boy gone with the river. He fell into the flood. It fell on deaf ears when Vimy said while crying. Then the warriors took the boy and the horse with them and went along the river bank. Thirumalayapan did not understand the meaning of this incident at that time. It seemed to make a little sense now. In the meantime, he remembered the street theatre troupe. Mainly, I remembered the mannerisms and voice of the man dressed as Kamsan and hiding his own face with a wooden puppet face. An explanation began to emerge as to whose voice it was that sounded like it had been heard earlier. After completing the Artha Jama Puja at night, Isana Shivbata came to his residence. He saw all Workadian lying on the threshold. Tirumala. Tirumala. He called out in an angry voice. Tirumala pretended to be fast asleep. Buddha went inside, pretending to lock the door. His quarreling posture with his wife half fell on Tirumala's ears. Tirumala knew that the fight was about him. When he woke up in the morning, Isana Shivbata came to Tirumala and asked, When are you leaving to travel around the country again? He asked. I will leave after their anger subsides, brother. He said. Don't call me Anna anymore. First of all today I am not your brother, you are not my brother. You are Shivadvashi, Nisan, Sand Alan. But his wife interceded for Tirumala and said, Why are you cursing him like this? What new thing has he said now that he has not said for so many days? You are the one who has lost too much devotion to Shiva. She said. You don't know anything. Do you know what he said yesterday in front of the great queen? What good is a temple for Paramashiva who wanders around with Sambar in the forest? he asked. It was as if lead had been poured into my ears. The queen did not sleep all night. He won't talk like that anymore. I'll correct him. If I say a good word to him, he listens. She said. It was a good word and a bad word. Let him go immediately to Rameswaram. Rama, let him also worship the Shivalinga that has removed his sins. That is his atonement. I will not wake up in his face until he does so. Said. Tirumala's lips quivered. To repay with interest. But he kept his patience as if he spoke it would spoil the matter. But his sister intervened again at this point and said, What's the matter? If you tell us to go to Rameswaram, he will go. We can go with him. Even after all these days, we have not had a child. What sin did we commit in our previous birth? Or what? Tirumala. Shall we all go to Rameswaram? She asked. Shivbata glared at both of them angrily and left. After a while Isana Butter came back and spoke softly to Thirumalai. Brother. Elders have said anger is sinful. I gave way to anger. Do you have any regrets? Said. Not at all. All Workadians said. Then you stay here. I will come after finishing the Uchakala Puja. I want to ask you for your opinion on some important matters. You are staying here, aren't you? You are not going anywhere. Said. Not going anywhere, brother. They don't intend to go anywhere. He said. Butter is gone. All Workadian said to himself, so fair. He said that several times. Then he left without even telling his sister-in-law. He went around the Vatimilak temple two or three times. Every now and then, if he hears any noise, he immediately hides and stops. His hopes were not in vain. The door of one of the Jain shrines slowly opened. At first, 
Isana Shivbata came out after looking from all three sides. Another man came out from behind. Aha! Who is he? Don't know the face? If you look at the body structure, it looks like a person who has dressed up as Kamsan. Who would it be? Don't let this go undiscovered. Whoa! For this reason, so much anger and magic. Emerging from the mud, the two went forward. All were Katayan sneaked aside and followed. After some time they reached the bank of the river. Behind the Chola mansion was a stream that was spreading like an ocean. But the department was far to the west of the mansion. There were many thick trees on the banks of the stream. Behind one of them stood Alvarkadian, with his head stretched out between two branches. A boat drifted in the waves. It looked like a palace boat. The boatman was standing on the shore. When he saw Butter and his companion, he pulled the boat to the shore and stopped it. Both boarded the boat. As the boat began to sink, the man with the butter looked back towards the shore. His face glowed and looked good. Alwarkadian was not surprised at all. He is the man he expected. He is the heroic youth who met in Viranarayanapuram and Kalatadupada. There is no doubt that he is the same person who was disguised as Kamsan. Where are they going on the boat? It is necessary to find that too. That means he should see if his guess is correct. On a street lined with many Chola mansions, the last mansion was locked. It was the mansion of Sundara Chola's first minister, Anuradha Brahmarayar. Prime Minister Anuradhar had gone to Madurai to establish the royal administration of the Pandian country. His family was in Tanjavur. So his old palace was locked. All were Katayan arrived at this mansion. On seeing him, the palace guards came and stood in reverence. He asked to open the door of the mansion. The guards opened the door. Then, according to his order, they locked the door outside. He crossed the three walls of the mansion and arrived at the back garden. A vine path led from the orchard through the nearby trees. Tirumala entered it and in no time reached the palace garden of Kundave Devi. He stood in a hidden place in one of the flag houses and looked around. He took so much trouble and it was not in vain. There was a drama performance that had to be described by great poets like Kaladasan. The boat stopped on the bank of the stream. Isanabata and Vandiyadeva descended from it. Then they came up through the steps of the water department. On a marble dais in the garden, a short distance from the stairs, Ilaya Prati Kundave was sitting. When the people who came in the boat climbed the stairs in the water and reached the top, Ilaya Pradai Kundave Devi stood up. Vandiyathevan then looked closely at the face of Apenarasi. He stood as he saw. Between him and Ilay Abrati Kundave a flower flag stood intervening with outstretched arms. A beautiful silkworm, a silkworm with many coloured feathers, came and sat on the vine. Kundave bent her golden face slightly and looked at the silkworm. Vandiyadeva stood staring at Kundave's face flower. The waves in the stream calmed down. The birds stopped singing. The cosmic divisions stood motionless. Many ages passed.